Good morning, Vinyl Community, where it is currently 6 a.m. And I have been up since 4.30 a.m. It's currently minus one and snowing. That's Canada for you. Why am I up so early? I guess it doesn't matter to you, but I feel like talking. Um, I took the night off work. And for those of you who work midnight shifts, who have worked midnight shifts, let's say midnight to eight or one till nine or whatever, um, and then you take a night off work or you're going into the weekend and you try to turn your sleep patterns back around to a normal person, like you have a family and you need to be up during normal hours. It's very hard to do that, to turn your clock back around every week. Uh, it's actually very hard in your body and very hard, in your, hard on your mind. So I got up at 4.30 in the morning, uh, which is normally my, my lunchtime at work. And I thought I'll stay up. The wife has to go to work early this morning, and I thought it's a good time to film my weekly Vinyl Finds video. Whew, that was a mouthful. And then you get to see me twice this week, and I apologize for that. But, but having said that, thank you to everyone who saw my Halloween video. I had a lot of fun making that video. I actually really did have a lot of fun. Um, made a little bit of an effort, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I thought it, I thought it was fun. Um... And the good doctor, I'm sure, will make an appearance next Halloween. And that's a good thing, because you really don't want to see that more than once a year. Whew. Cheers, everyone. What I got for you today... Um, got an assortment of new records I got in the mail. Or I've gotten in the mail the last couple of weeks. Uh, some records from local... New records from local record stores, which I'll talk about that as well. Um, my normal thrift store finds, etc., etc., uh, so, you know, let's stop the yakking and get right to this. New records I got in the mail and at local record stores. I'm very, very happy to say I got a copy of Bruce Springsteen's The Ghost of Tom Joad. Finally reissued on vinyl. And oddly enough, about a year and a half ago, a local record store had this for like $150. Uh, that's $150, an original pressing sealed. And I was going to make a really lopsided trade for it. Um, it would have taken a lot of tra a lot of trade in vinyl to to get that record, and I didn't do it because I thought eventually it's gonna it has to get reissued on vinyl. Fast forward to a year and a half later, here it is, and I gotta say kudos to Sony for making this a single disc. Um, I think I've talked about this before about the how unnecessary it is for certain records to come out on double vinyl, and I know the counter arguments that. That, you know, you get a, a longer lead-in groove and the grooves are wider so the sound is better. But sometimes records just don't necessarily need it. Um, and and just for a price point, sometimes it's better to have... Like, I got this for twenty four ninety nine. That's an affordable record to me for a new vinyl. And it sounds good. And like I said, I was just very relieved to see there was a single vinyl at a good price. Uh, possibly one of my favorite Bruce Springsteen albums, um, The Ghost of Tom Joad, finally, finally on vinyl, without having to buy that box set that came out that had that in it. Um, let's go to this one. I could talk a lot about this record. Maybe I'll do a future video on it. Probably not, though. Fleetwood Mac, say you will. Uh, first time ever on vinyl. Uh, and... There's a DVD that you can see, or maybe it's on YouTube, about the making of this album that puts this album into context. This is their last studio album, I believe, that came out. Um, it was a while ago. Was it 2003 or so? And if you see that making of DVD, like I said, it puts this album in context. And why, it puts the, why I think it, you need to see that DVD, it, this is a very lopsided album. And I'm going to try not to talk about this too much, but cause I could go on forever about it. Like I said, it's a very lopsided album because uh, Lindsey Buckingham, if you know his solo material, he he brought in a, a lot of his songs that were earmarked for a solo album. And his solo material is a little bit more left of center. And within the context of Fleetwood Mac, it kind of, like I said, it makes this album very uneven. Uh, where you can tell which ones are Lindsey's solo songs. And I think we're, it, I think the album did okay. It didn't do phenomenal. But um, some of the great tracks off this album is Alume, um, which is a Stevie Nicks song, uh, the song Come. Um, Merle turning over in his grave is really good. There's a few other ones. But like I said, there's a lot of, 
iffy songs in my opinion. And I think what e eventually sunk this album, I think it did well like I said initially, is they released a horrible first single called, uh, was it Peacemaker? Peacekeeper. And it was a kind of a tribute to 9-11, which is a, a very noble cause, but they, and it, it references this in the DVD, they chose the most commercial thing possible to throw it as a, out as a first single. Um, which, you know, I, I understand, but sometimes that's not the best thing to do. And I, I just think it's a dreadful song. If you disagree, I apologize, but that's my opinion. Um, but still, worth uh, for the first time on vinyl, it's a worthy listen. Fleetwood Max, say you will. And then, at the same time, they finally released, the first time ever on vinyl, The Dance. Um, fantastic comeback live album when they got all back together and they... They did that uh, DVD or whatever it was, an MTV special. Um, and they, there was a few new songs they threw in on this album, which, eh. But as a whole, one, just an amazing comeback live album. Maybe one of my favorite of all time for like a band who got re, who reformed and, and went back uh, on the road. The Dance, Fleetwood Mac, fantastic. First time on vinyl. One for the Canadians, although I think this band did very well in Australia as well, is The Pursuit of Happiness, first album, Love Junk. This has been reissued as a double record. And uh, the second record is a lot of original versions. Like, in Canada, they were an indie band before they signed to Chrysalis Records. This was produced by Todd Rundgren, by the way. Maybe one of Canada's greatest power pop albums of all time is this one, Love Junk. Um, and they released a lot of, uh, they, used to, they released a few indie singles, and those singles differ from the Todd Rundgren sessions. And those are on, on the second record with some demo stuff, and et cetera, et cetera. And oddly enough, I get to see this band tomorrow. Tomorrow night, I get to see, oh no. Yeah, I think it's tomorrow night. Anyways, um, I should get my shit together and know that, because I might miss it. They're doing a reunion tour and playing this album in its entirety. And I'm sure they'll do an encore of greatest hits, but... Uh, I have not seen The Pursuit of Happiness since uh, early 1990s on their downwards, uh, Downward Road Tour. But anyways, they're back together uh, for one time only to promote this album. Very happy that I get to see Pursuit of Happiness play this album in its entirety tomorrow night. Let's talk about this album. Let's talk about The Heads. Don't, don't skip past this one, please. Um, I got to talk about this band. I did a, a, a record fair video in the spring, and I talked about this album, The Heads, Everybody Knows We Got Nowhere. And I got turned on to this album by, and I don't remember who on YouTube. It's one of your videos. I, I do watch your videos. I, I may not comment. I do watch them, and I do pay attention. And when something looks interesting, I pick it up. And this was one of them, The Heads, a, a fantastic cover, and it's an amazing album. Hard Rock, Psychedelic. Oh, Jesus. Just an amazing album. And um, I had talked about this album. And uh, this little story, I'll make it really brief, ties into what I'm going to show you. When I was looking for this album, I found I made the video and I found it a couple days later at this record fair. Just really oddly enough, someone had a copy, had that copy for sale. But previous to that, I had sent emails around to local record stores. And one store responded. That being uh, Listen Records in Edmonton for those people who are local. A store that I actually I don't really I don't normally go to because I've never really had to because, um, you know, like I've said before that I spent two decades in music retail, either running or owning record stores. But uh, I sent an email to Listen this store called Listen Records and he responded and he said he didn't have a copy but there was a box set available and he'll try to get it for me and then. I ended up finding this record. Long story short, or short story long, I went in to listen because I moved not too far away from that record store. And I went in there and I'm guessing it's the owner. Uh, he must recognize me because he said, you're the guy that emailed me about the heads. I'm like, yeah, I did. That's amazing you remembered. And what endears me to local record stores now that I'm not in the business anymore is how they treat customers. I always treated customers like gold, and if I get treated nice at record stores, you got my you got my cash right there. And he said, "Well, if you like that album, see, well, I guess you know he was like, um, you know, I'm glad you got that album finally. But if you like that album, you'll like this record." 
The heads are, was it, are RKT, or I'm, I'm guessing it might, it might be short for racket. I'm guessing. Maybe I'm wrong. He said, you're going to love this album. It's better than, than that one. I'm like, okay. Um, it was a bit expensive, so I said, okay, I'll maybe sample it online. And I sampled it, on, I sampled it online. And phew, just blew my mind apart. So I went back to Listen Records. And this is the new triple vinyl reissue of this record. And uh, I'm going to guess I was talking to the owner, Chris. I believe it's Chris. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Um, but I went in there and I, I just like, wow, I, I got to have this record. He recommended this and it's one of those spot on recommendations. Um, the Heads triple vinyl reissue of Racket or RKT. Hard rock, psychedelic, just freak out. Amazing, amazing stuff. If you're into, if that description sounds interesting to you, Whew. like I said, I have not recovered from listening to this record. Just amazing. These two records, man. I, I wish I could remember which vinyl community member was showing these records, but thank you so much. And I gotta thank you to Listen Records for recommending that one. Oh, I, I know it's just, anyways. It just, I just get so excited when I hear something I've not heard before. That blows me away because this when you think you you know it all, and there's something new that comes along that just blows you away. It's very exciting for me. Um, I think that's it for the new vinyl. I think it is. Well, I'm going to show you. First of all, I got two singles to show you really quickly. This one I've been looking for forever. I've never seen a picture sleeve copy of this, and I was just absolutely thrilled to see this. It's one of my favorite Canadian songs of all time. I found a seven inch picture sleeve copy of. Cowboy Junkies, Sweet Jane. Like I said, one of the most amazing... And in fact, Lou Reed had said that the Cowboy Junkies uh, have done a better version that, that he could ever have done, if that makes sense. Sweet Jane by Cowboy Junkies. I mean, I was so thrilled to find this uh, picture sleeve copy. And then this is a real oddity. Henry Rollins and the Hard on the Hard-Ons, Let There Be Rock. Henry Rollins, this is from 1991, I believe. Henry Rollins and a band called The Hard-Ons doing ACDC's Let There Be Rock. Don't know anything else about it. I'm a huge Rollins band, Rollins band fan um, and Henry Rollins in general. But I've never seen this single before, but I picked that one up uh, locally. Let's get to used records, vinyl finds from thrift stores, etc., etc., etc. I found this last night, um, and I, when I got this morning, um... This was the first thing I did was I played this record while my wife was kind of getting ready for work at 4.30. I found a copy of Funkadelic Maggot Brain last night. And this is going to be my screen cap. I'm going to get my face out of it this time. I found this last night in the shrink. I don't know anything about the pressing. It's on Westbound Records. And I don't care what pressing it is. I have never owned this record. Um... I've never really seen this record before other than uh, the Four Men With Beards pressing, which I'm very, very... You guys know the record for uh, the record label Four Men, Four Men With Beards? It's very hit and miss and more miss than hit. So I've stayed away from that version. And I found this last night while out and about with my wife. One of, like, Funkadelic first three albums. Essential. It's funk, but it's not. It's, it's, it's funk psychedelic. And this... Album is bookended with um, the song Maggot Brain and the song Wars of uh, Wars of Armageddon. And Eddie Hazel, the guitar player on this album, uh, Wars of Arm Armageddon is a ten. I think it's about a ten minute. Was it ten minutes? Ten minute long kind of guitar freakout track. And his guitar solos on that on and on Maggot Brain. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. If you've not heard this album, and you think it's funk, like, you know, like their later super overtly funk stuff, it's not. It's very, very psychedelic influenced and very amazing. Funkadelic, Mega Brain. Finally, I found a copy on vinyl in the shrink, um, which doesn't really matter. It's just for a point of reference. Oh, uh, let's go to Miles Davis. I found a couple Miles Davis records about a month ago. And like I said, I'm very far behind in catching up with my vinyl find videos. So I've been neglectful not to show you this. But I found an original Columbia 2 eye pressing of um, My Funny Valentine, Miles Davis in Concert. 
amazing concert. And then not that, I think it was last week I was out with my wife out in the boat. And I found a copy of Miles Davis Live in Berlin on CD, um, which is another amazing concert. Um, this is one, this is around that time. This has the song So What on it from his album Kind of Blue. And not that long after this, he stopped performing his older material. And it wasn't until Live at Montreux, that was shortly before his death, that he did a kind of a retrospective concert of his stuff with Gil Evans' orchestra. But um, these early live concerts from, like, what is this, like, probably mid to late 60s, essential stuff because you never heard this stuff performed live again. He stopped doing it and he concentrated on his new stuff. But Miles Davis, uh, live in concert, My Funny Valentine, uh, Columbia 2 Eye Pressing. And then I found a, a UK pressing. I have a Canadian pressing of this. I got to take the, the slip cover off. Um, of In a Silent Way, UK pressing. Very dark cover on this one. Um, I won't bother taking it out. I don't know what, I, I haven't been arsed to look up the pressing, what, what year it is and all that stuff, but um, a UK pressing of In a Silent Way. I'm gonna guess this might be a better pressing than my Canadian one. UK German pressings, Japanese pressings, especially that some you know we all know sometimes they tend to be um, a bit better pressings. But Miles Davis in a silent way, UK pressing. One second, I'm trying to keep this as brief as possible today, and I'm going to fail miserably. Um, don't take this one for granted. Frederick Golda, uh, the air from other planets. I picked this up. With the two Miles Davis records, uh, this was a buck ninety nine. Uh, someone there was some jazz records uh, uh, at this place, buck ninety nine, uh, late sixties. It just looks weird, and it turns out to be a really great jazz album from the late sixties. I think it's sixty seven or so. Uh, if you have a chance to hear this album and you're into jazz, it's a really really great album. Um, it, I just picked this up on a lark. And it turns out that it's, um, it's very, it's, I guess it's somewhat high, highly regarded album, which I never knew. Anyways, the air from other planets, Frederick Golda. Um, sorry, this is kind of all random stuff, but you know what? I'm going to start, just start showing you stuff that I wouldn't normally show you because I'm going to show you Man Without Hats, uh, Pop Goes the World. Something I would never usually show you, but I, I have never had this on vinyl, which is weird. And I've talked about this last video. Sometimes you just need something fun, something light and fluffy to turn your mind off. And this is what this is. I've never, like I said, it's, I'm going to guess I find this hard uh, to find on vinyl because uh, it's in the era of cassette and CDs. And maybe I just haven't noticed it before, but I found this at a thrift store last night. And for us Canadians, ready for this? This is one of those uh, albums where they kind of had faux members, uh, which was kind of like um, the thing at the time, the band called ABC. They had an album called How to Be a Millionaire where they had two members that weren't really members but were kind of like characters. And that that's what this album has. Ready for this, Canadians? Banam Carnival is in the band for this album. This is a very famous character in Canada and especially Quebec, Banam Carnival, uh, which means nothing to you Canadian or to you uh, people outside of Canada. But it's a very, very important figure in Canada. Banam Carnival. It's a shout out to my friends in Quebec because uh, uh, I'm not sure what the what the what the, le the legacy of Bonham Carnival is now, but that was a very big figure when I was a kid. Um, anyways, you can Google that and see what and see what what who he is. Um, the Intruders, Energy of Love. I sorry, I've not even peeled price stickers off these. This is buck ninety nine two ninety nine whatever. Thrift store find, and you see an album like this. This is a promo copy on the Sound of Philadelphia Records. This just looks like an incredible funk album, and it is. Um, what? Well, sometimes I'm just getting a, I get a, a, a yearning, an urge to hear some different funk records, and they're easy to find at thrift stores. I see funk records all the time, but I kind of just go by gut feeling. Cause I'm not that schooled on funk. I'll be honest with you. I know the main albums. Um, but this just, and I go by gut feeling, and this looks like a good funk record, doesn't it? The Intruders. Anyways. Here is one hell of a find. This was actually the day I found The Intruders. I, 
here's the price sticker, $2.99, a band called Earth, um, Hibernaculum, I'm, I believe it's called, I could be wrong on that one, it's on Southern Lord Records, um, Doom Stoner Rock, from 2007, I'm going to guess nobody bought this at the thrift store before I got there because it looks like kind of a new agey album. And people just skip over looking for their Beatles albums. But check this out. This is an original picture sleeve or a picture disc. It's worth a few bucks. Who would donate this? I don't know. But God bless you. That was a very exciting find if you're into that kind of music, that stoner rock doom rock thing on southern lord records earth that's an insane find i found that was a while ago like i said it's been sitting in my pile here um i'll come to this one later i'll come to that one later aretha franklin just you know what a bog standard best of album in the shrink i got for an original price stickers around it from a local store called kelly's one for the uh, people from my city we all remember kelly's back in the day just a really good greatest hits album uh, when you get the urge to hear the hits, they're all on here from her first 10 years. Think, um, Respect, um, you know, all those good songs. Spanish Harlem. Aretha Franklin, 10 Years of Gold. Um, you know what? What else do I got to show you? I got some stuff to show you, don't worry. More funk stuff I just pick up because they're cheap. They're like a couple bucks. Earth, Wind & Fire. Rays. And, uh, what is this? I can't remember what this one's called again. All in all. Um, sometime, on a Friday night, man, sometimes you just gotta... I just have a lot of fun playing funk records on a Friday night. One of these has Let's Groove on it. I think it's this one. Anyways, Let's Groove by Earth, Wind and Fire is my jam. Anyways, Earth, Wind and Fire, common stuff you find at thrift stores, but... Sometimes I gotta pick those up because I don't have them. Uh, what am I gonna show you next? The Mahavishnu Orchestra with John uh, John McLaughlin, the Inner Morning Flame from the late '60s, I believe, I be or early '70s. I don't remember now. But the, I find their albums at thrift stores somewhat frequently. I pick them up when I can. Uh, this one has Billy Cobham on it. Obviously, John McLaughlin's on guitar, very well-known guitar player. The Billy Cobham of uh, Spectrum fame, one of, one of my favorite jazz albums of all time. Um, Jan Harmer's on guitar. Uh, their album, a lot of their albums, I mean, it's hit and miss with them, but uh, I find more hit than miss. But anyways, that's all I can tell you about this album. Um, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert on, on this band, but really good listen this one was. This is from 1968, and it's a, it's a box set from Non Such Records. It's the Guide to Electronic Music. Another pretty well, I mean, it's worth a few bucks too, but it's from 1968 and just in mint condition. Um, it's by Paul Beaver and Bernard Krauss, and it's a comprehensive survey of electronic music, music and, its crea and its creation. Just whacked out electronic stuff from late 60s. Just fantastic stuff. Like I said, it's a box hit on non-such records. There's about, I don't know how many records are in here, three? That was like a buck in mint condition. Just weird, weird stuff that I will pick up every single time because it's all different stuff I've not heard before. I found this at a thrift store with my wife and um, she said, you're getting this, right? And I said, yeah, of course I am. Because you know what's on this? It's the Muppets. It's the Muppet Show Volume 2. And Pigs in Space is on this. Pigs in Space. Of course I'm going to get the Muppets Volume 2. What year is this? This is like 1978. Yeah, 1978. I just, man, I loved the Muppets show when I was a kid. I loved it. And like I said, it was a buck and it has pigs in space in it. On it. <sighs> yes. If you don't know what pigs in space is, you're young and you need to go, you need to go watch Pigs in Space from the Muppets show. One of the most entertaining things I've ever, when I was a kid. I got something really obscure. And the, the people from Quebec might know this one. Quebecois people. Luc Cousineau. Uh, what's it called? Is it called Airedale? 
I don't even know. I picked this up because it's just a curiosity. I looked it on Discogs, and like I said, it, I, it, the value sometimes tells you that people are after it. It might be a good album. This one of those really weird finds. The cover told me to buy it. It's uh, Quebecois folk rock stuff. Really good stuff, actually. Um, don't know anything else about it. So uh, if you know about this, about this guy, Luke Cuisineau, Cuisineau uh, let me know. Just a curiosity. For a buck, why not? Um, a couple things to... Oh, yeah, this one. I haven't shown this one yet. And I should have showed this at the top of the video because I've probably lost you by now. Um, this is an original Harvest Records pressing. And it's the only ever pressing of this album by a band called um, Tanned Leather. And the album's called Child of Never Ending Love. German pressing on Harvest Records. It's uh, somewhat of a progressive rock album. It's maybe one of the lighter things that Harvest Records ever released. But I found this at a thrift store for like a couple bucks. Original Harvest Records pressing from Germany in mint condition. Um, it just, like I said, this is one of those things where the label and the cover just told me to buy it. And it, I liked it a lot. It's not, it, it's, not, it's not incredibly well thought of, but it's just a really cool find. Tanned Leather, Child of Never Ending Love, original... I guess the original is the only ever pressing on Harvest Records. I'm going to wrap this up with a couple of things, uh, a couple of pop things, and then I'll talk to you at the end here, excuse me, um, about uh, what I got coming up. Um, I picked this up in Vancouver. Was it last weekend when I was in Vancouver? I don't remember. An album that I've been looking for, and you, you might discount this album and their follow-up album to this, but this is the Thompson Twins' Big Trash. Gold stamp label, gold stamp promo. There's the gold stamp right there. Original hype sticker in the shrink. Um, after they left RCA Records, they did a, what was that album, Close to the Bone? That did nothing. Warner Brothers signed them. And they made a series of two albums under the Thompson Twins name that were really kind of really modern stuff. Uh, the, their album after this called Queer is I, I, it's one of my favorite albums from an 80s band ever but big trash don't discount this album it's a lot it i mean they really updated their sound and in, in a really good way debbie harry's on this album but sugar daddy queen of the usa bombers in the sky first three tracks boom 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 three incredible tracks and they're down to a two-piece on this album but uh just an incredible pop album but that's not pop. It's more uh, a lot of modern dance influences and, you know, some electric guitar or hard electric guitars in, it, in places. But anyways, I'm describing it really badly. But I actually love this album because um, you guys know I'm an 80s nerd as well as other things. But Thompson Twins, Big Trash. Really, I mean, I was really happy to find this copy. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up with a couple uh, just kind of weird albums. The Glamour Camp. Stuff I would never normally show you. I found this for a dollar. What the Glamour Camp is, this is from 1988. And this is uh, features, a, uh, essentially it's a, it's one guy with some musicians uh, he kind of hired in. But the main guy is Chris um, Okasik. And he is Rick Okasik's son. Rick Okasik of the Cars. He made this album under the name Glamour Camp, which is Chris, his son Chris. And it's just a really, it's actually a really fun album. Um, didn't do a whole lot. I think MTV played, um, well, I can't remember what the song was. She did it. That might have been the first single from it. But uh, and I remember MTV playing it a few times. But uh, just one of those albums that flew under the radar and got some minimal love. But a, a decent album by the Glamour Camp. I don't know what ever happened to Chris Ocasek, but... Uh, Anyways, goodbye, Mr. McKenzie. I'm going to end it with this one. Uh, this is a promo 12-inch I found the same day I found Glamour Camp. Goodbye, Mr. McKenzie is uh, the band featuring Shirley Manson from Garbage. She was, This is her band before Garbage. And um, I met Shirley Manson. Um, if I could be bothered, I'd, I'd insert the photo of me and her. I got to go backstage and, and meet the band. This is back when I was in retail. And you, you could get backstage to any show with labels. But I met Shirley Manson, which is like... Anyways. 
And I had her sign my Goodbye Mr. McKenzie CDs, and she loudly swore out loud how, you know, she, I can't remember what, which, what profanity she used, but she was so surprised to see Goodbye Mr. McKenzie CDs that uh, it kind of uh, sparked a conversation between us that um, I'll remember forever, because Shirley Manson. Anyways, this is a pro, uh, promo single for the song The Rattler from their first album, Good Deeds and Dirty Rags, Goodbye Mr. McKenzie. Featuring Shirley Manson from Garbage. And I'm a massive Garbage fan. I don't talk about them very often, but I love the band. Uh, I don't have anything else to show you right now that I pulled. What I got coming up, um, if you care, is I have a couple of videos in my series, that I, and I've not done this in a while, called OK, OK, I'll Listen to It. I've done um, Jeff Buckley, which has got a lot of views on that video. Whew. Thank you to those people who watch, who've watched that video. Now, I've done one on Brian Eno that no one really seemed to care about. But uh, what that is, if you don't know, if you're a new subscriber, new viewer, is uh, okay, okay, I'll listen to it, is when I listen to a classic album for the first time in its entirety. And then I kind of, I'll introduce it, I'll, I'll actually go listen to it and come back and tell you my initial thoughts on the album and why I've not listened to it before. Um, and I'm kind of really honest about it because not all classic albums really kind of are in, uh, resonate with me. Let's put it that way. But I got two filmed. They're uploaded to YouTube. Um, I'll upload them. I'll make them public to you all. I'll, at least I'll do one next week anyways. And um, I don't know what else is coming up, but it's, going, it's coming into the Christmas season. It's November now. Um, so it's, uh, there's a lot of good releases coming out. Uh, I have the Metallica box set coming, the Ant Justice for All box set coming. I'm hoping to show you all. And other things. And it's 32 minutes. I'm not, I'm, I wanted to make this one short, but it was not to be. Hey, I made it up with my Halloween video, which was 10 minutes. So This has been Naz Nomad, a.k.a. David Michael, or David Michael, a.k.a. Naz Nomad. And it's probably 6.32 a.m. And I got a long day of record shopping ahead of me. Days off and paydays equal record shopping. Like I need more records. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I Like I said, I watch your videos. I don't always comment, but you guys influence me to the nth degree, which is evidence in the vinyl I'm showing you. Thank you all for showing me stuff I've not heard before. I appreciate it all. Thank you to everyone who watches. I really appreciate it from the heart. It's not uh, disingenuous. So once again, take care. And I'll see you next week.